In this bulletin, police launch criminal investigation into death of robbery suspect. Fiji and New Zealand foreign ministers hold bilateral meeting after seven years. And 5,000 Fijians overseas now registered for September elections. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Two young men died on the spot when the car they were traveling in failed to negotiate a bend on the new Singatoka Valley Road. Police say the accident occurred near the Nandurulolo Research Station this morning. The victims have not been identified yet as an investigation continues into the cause of the accident. The Electoral Commission is expected to announce its decision soon on the appeals against 21 political candidates nominated to contest the election. Commission Chairman Chen Ban Yang earlier told FBC News their decision will be final. The Electoral Decree states the Electoral Commission must make a decision on the application as soon as possible and in any event within three days upon receipt of the application. The deadline was 4 p.m. today, and since the deadline has lapsed, it would appear that the Supervisor of Elections decision is deemed valid. It remains to be seen whether the Commission's decision will remain valid and whether it will be further contested with any of the candidates. A criminal investigation into the death of robbery suspect Vilike Sosoko was announced by Police Commissioner Major General Ben Hunaval this afternoon. Rashika Kumar has the details. Senior Superintendent from the Police Internal Affairs Division has been assigned to investigate the death of Soko. According to the Commissioner, from the initial investigation and the result of the post-mortem, a full criminal investigation is warranted. If there is any concrete evidence against any person in this, in this investigation of any wrongdoing, I will not hesitate to either suspend, interdict or terminate immediately. The 30-year-old father of three died at the Lotuka Hospital on Wednesday night. His father is pleading with relevant authorities to do justice in the matter of his son's death. I hope those in authorities will apply justice where it is due and let them pay for all these things that has happened to my son. Soko was arrested with three others last Friday in connection with the robbery of the city forex money exchange in Nandi town that morning. Hunewal declined to comment any further on the matter, saying it is sensitive. Rashika Kumar, FPC News. Meanwhile, a third robbery suspect who was allegedly part of a five-member gang involved in the $50,000 robbery in Nandi has been denied bail even though he was rushed to hospital while the magistrate was still preparing his bail ruling. 32-year-old Eroni Mbale Nukulala appeared in the Nandi Magistrate's Court this afternoon, charged with one count of aggravated robbery and has been further remanded in custody. However, Magistrate Wikarama Sekra has ordered that Mbale Nukulala be admitted in hospital and should not be removed until he is cleared by medical authorities. Mbale Nukulala wasn't able to walk and his condition deteriorated while his case was still being heard. Police officers had to carry him outside before he was taken to the Nandi hospital in this police vehicle. New Zealand's Foreign Affairs Minister Murray McCulley and his Fijian counterpart Ratu Inoke Kumbombola met this afternoon in the first meeting of its kind in seven years. Our West reporter Akosita Tale has been following this significant bilateral meeting today and joins us live from our Nandi office to give us the latest update. Yes, Jackie, the bilateral talks concluded late this afternoon at the Tanoa International Hotel. McCulley arrived in the country at around midday today before heading into a meeting with Ratu Inoke. 
the two ministers had a private meeting before the consultation started, which involved senior officials from both countries. A wide range of bilateral and regional issues were discussed of significance with next month's elections. After the meeting, McCurley spoke to the media. He says New Zealand is pleased with the progress Fiji has made towards the September 17th elections. To uh, hear about the progress and to look at ways in which we can fine-tune the, uh, the contribution that we're making to ensure that uh, things move well here. But I'm, I'm very pleased with the reports that we're receiving uh, and uh, we look forward to the elections here on the 17th of uh, September. We of course have elections in New Zealand only three days later. Thank you for that, Tale. The Elections Office has confirmed receiving over 5,000 registrations of Fijian voters living abroad. Of this, the bulk of the voters reside in New Zealand and Australia, with a combined total of 3,180 registrations. Maggie Boyle has more. One vote, one value. With the registration of Fijian voters living overseas now confirmed, there are more than 5,000 reasons for political parties to consider a campaign abroad. We have registered 1,768 people in New Zealand, uh, 1,412 in Australia, 756 in the US. In the UK, we registered 499 people. Uh, Syria has 419 and PNG has about 148 and followed by Germany with 113. In any election, it's a numbers game, and political parties will no doubt consider diverting some of their attention to potential voters afar. The Social Democratic Liberal Party, People's Democratic Party, and Fiji First have hit the campaign trail overseas. Back at home, tallying up the registered national voters list is ongoing. Meanwhile, Sanin clarified why there is a change in venue for the national candidate list draw from the Grand Pacific Hotel to the elections office. The draw will take place from 9 a.m. until 1 p.m. tomorrow, and the event will be broadcast live on FBC TV and the radio stations of FBC. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. The government expects to announce a decision soon on the 100 Sands Limited Casino project at Dinarawa Nandi. Attorney General Ayazide Kayum says they have given the developers conditions to meet and some have not been fulfilled. Christopher Chan reports. No firm decision has been made about the future of Fiji's first casino. Although the minister spoke to us about the development, he didn't reveal what stand the government intends to take. Yes, we have some issues with them, and uh, as I've said before, that we'll be issuing a statement on it uh, fairly soon. We've written to them, uh, and uh, there'll be a decision made on it fairly soon. Not only is the project lying idle, but 100 cents is also facing great difficulty, paying its monthly fines of U.S. $100,000. The last time we spoke to you on June 4th, you said that they had uh, requested for time to pay the fines. That is one of the issues which we'll be disclosing. We'll, we'll be disclosing that. This is the site on which the casino will hopefully be constructed. No signs of any works being carried out. It has been like this for the last four months. The entrance to the site has been locked down and this construction base for workers abandoned. Will you continue giving them time to show codes? As I said, that we'll give you the, uh, the outcome of our decision uh, very soon. You said the same thing with Yes, I did. And we do uh, uh, have given them various conditions that they needed to meet. Some of them they met, some of them they didn't. So we will tell you of the outcome. In the time being, there is no word from either Larry Clonch or his business partner, Tim Manning, about the progress of the development or whether it will ever take place. Christopher Chant, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, Chinese Naval Hospital ship here to provide medical services to Fijians. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, hey, Namaste Fiji. Aapke har ek problem ke dawa lekar main a gayi hu. 9 se 12 baje tak aapki saheli Renu. Choo, choo, choo. 40 ne 20 ka dikhna hai. मैं हूँ ना आपके साथ में मिर्ची एफएम पर 9 से 12 बजे तक मंडे टू फ्राइडे मिर्ची इट्स हॉट
Welcome back. This is FBC News. The Chinese People's Liberation Army hospital ship Pisak is berthed at the Suva King's Wharf. It arrived this morning to provide free medical service to Fijians over the next eight days. Savaratambo reports. This is the first time the Chinese naval hospital ship is in Fiji. It is equipped with 300 beds, eight operating rooms, and offers more than 200 types of medical services. The Fiji military was at hand to welcome the ship. You are most welcome, and we hope to have an enjoyable period in the next eight days uh, as we go around and share the beauties of Fiji. The ship will provide humanitarian health service to the people and will serve 400 patients a day during its eight-day visit. We have anticipated uh, your arrival with your team of experts to help the people of Fiji and to share and extend the good fair friendships we've enjoyed in the years uh, past. The ship brings with it around 360 medical staff. Consultations, observations and checkups are open to the public and registrations can be done at the King's Wharf outside the ship from 10 a.m. tomorrow. Sabera Tambua, FBC News. A march organized by the Methodist Church of Fiji for its youth has been cancelled by the Fiji Roads Authority. Church spokesperson Reverend James Bagwan says they have appealed against the decision and are still awaiting a response. Reverend Bagwan adds they have another plan in place should the march remain cancelled tomorrow. Church youths were supposed to have marched from 8.30 a.m. tomorrow starting from the flea market, then up Victoria Parade to Pratt Street and finally on to Furnival Park in Turak. What we have received is just notification from the Fiji Roads Authority um, in, in the communication that we have received. They have advised us that uh, because that they are going to be having the float parade uh, in the afternoon uh, and given the busyness of the, um, uh, the streets at that time, they are not giving us permission to, to hold the march through the streets. Reverend Bagwan says they will officially launch a complaint with the FRA later. The youth were to march around Turak area tomorrow, led by the Salvation Army Band. The Methodist Church of Fiji will continue to try and find a balance in the consumption of kava by church members. Church spokesperson Reverend James Bagwan says the standing committee last year ratified the late church president Reverend Tuikila Kilawangai Ratu's request to ban the consumption of kava on Sundays. Vosito Kote Wasawasa reports. The church folk were again reminded this morning to be mindful of their kava consumption. Addressing the congregation that had gathered for the annual festivities at Furnival Park in Suva this morning, Reverend Chovili Meo said many followers still consume kava during the day when it could be better spent on studying the Bible. As Christians, we don't follow the crowd. We are called to reflect and act uh, based on our own uh, responsibility. Reverend James Bagwan says there have been many changes noted in the consumption of kava by the church faithfuls. There is a lot of traditional things taking place within our celebrations this week, and so uh, we are trying to find the balance in that. Uh, you know, we, we understand that uh, we must observe uh, and respect the traditions of our Itoke culture in Fiji. And so that is a very important thing for us to remember. But at the same time, we are called to uh, exercise self-discipline. Reverend Bagwan admits trying to find a balance on what is important for the church community and what is important for a cultural and social community is always going to be a challenge for the church. Vasita Kote Wasawasa, FBC News. Retired teachers now have a chance to further their careers in the region. A second batch of retired Fijian teachers departs on Monday for the Marshall Islands to take up teaching positions there. The four teachers were presented with their airline tickets by the Public Service Permanent Secretary Parmesh Chand. They will be working under the Fiji Volunteer Service and will teach maths, history and English in the Marshall Islands. This uh, project also has had its own... Uh success uh, uh, story wherein uh, the initial group of uh, a dozen teachers which went to Marshall Islands, uh, majority of them got offered uh, permanent contracts by the government of the Republic of Marshall Islands. So they came back after finishing the two years and, and have gone back.
Currently, there are nine teachers in Vanuatu, six in Nauru, and nine in Tuvalu serving under the FVS, bringing to 34 the number of Fijian volunteer teachers in Pacific Island countries. The annual Certified Practicing Accountants Congress got underway at Denarau in 90 this morning. This is the sixth consecutive year the CPA Congress has been hosted in Fiji. CPA Australia, Fiji Branch President Ravendra Achari says, the organization has grown to become one of the largest accounting bodies in the world, with more than 150,000 members across 121 countries. The theme for the two-day conference is Leadership, Be Heard, Be Recognized. Attorney General Ayesaid Kayum delivered the keynote address to more than 450 participants this morning. So I think what is really critical is that to be a good leader, you must be able to have a fundamental level of honesty in what you're doing. You must at the same time, to be a very good leader, we believe, that you must have a vision. You must have a goal. A large number of people turned up at the Mirchi FM night at Alba Park in Suva yesterday. The main highlight was the performance by the Indiana Bollywood group led by artists from India, Pamindar Kaur. Local music bands also attracted a number of people. People were also able to see their favorite announcers live on stage. Tonight's program on the FBC stage is hosted by Gold FM. Friday Night Sports now. Jamie, what do you have for us? Good evening. Well, we have results from day one of the Battle of the Giants and the National Netball Championships currently underway in the West. And in the Skipper Cup that comes to an end tomorrow, Nandrunga will take on Naita Siri at Lawanga Park. We take a look at their preparations for the big game after the break. Stay with us. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan par. Aap pa saagat hai, bachcha ki dunia mein. Hamesha ki tarha, aaj bhi. Hum aap ke liye kahaniya aur kavitaan lekar aay hai. Aur bachcho, aap hume kool bhi kar sakte hai. Namaskar, mai ho Pallavi. Radio Fiji 2, Desh ki dharkan par. Monday to Friday, 3 se lekar 4 bujhe tak. Bachcha ki dunia mein, aur 4 se lekar 7 bujhe tak. मस्तानी शाम के सफर में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ वेलकम बैक टू एफ बी सी स्पोर्ट्स नानरंगा रग्बी हैज मेड ए फ्यू टैक्टिकल चेंजेस टू इट्स साइड दैट विल बैटल नाइता सीरी इन द स्किपर कप फाइनल टुमारो Officials are adamant that it will take nothing away from the stallion's outfit, which has stamped its mark as the team to beat this year. Talin Dawadakadaka reports. Ratumeli Kurisaru will mastermind the Nandrunga attack from the fly half position, a regular fullback this season. Officials believe the youngster is more than capable of steering the stallions to victory. He is a gifted uh, first five uh, player, a good playmaker, a good uh, decision maker, and uh, he has been involved and he's been in the system. It's just a matter of uh, bringing him up uh, to play for this uh, first 15. Nandrunga just managed to edge Naita Siri in their previous encounter earlier in the season. Stallion's coach Asala Naunga has made five changes to his side in order to claim the title on home soil. We are expecting a very, very tough game, uh, especially for the two teams coming up into, this, into the final. Um, it will be more entertaining than the, than the uh, round robin one. Uh, round robin one was very entertaining and... Uh, uh, probably you can, uh, can say that it's uh, a game of the season uh, and uh, this will definitely be above that, uh, the game this Saturday. Tomorrow's final is expected to be a cracker of a match between the two top teams in the country. Thailand or the Kavak, FBC Sports. The Rewa football side has started its Inc. Mobile Battle of the Giants campaign with a 1-0 victory over Lombasa this afternoon. Misael and Raunimbaka scored the winning goal to give the Delta Tigers the three vital points. With uh, Setereki Hughes and Peniam Roba as Rewa come into attack in the way Sokuru on to Misale and the flags don't go up. They point and it's Misale and Ronimbaka. Again, a mistake by Lambasa. The Super side started the tournament with a comfortable 4 0 win over Nandrunga. Gurjit Singh's side looked clinical and took advantage of the mistakes by Nandrunga to clinch their opening victory. Currently underway is the match between Lautoka and Navo with the scores locked at nil all. New Fiji netball coach Kate Carpenter is keen on developing netters right from the grassroots level. Carpenter was impressed with the performance of youngsters on in day one of the Digicel and Punjas National Netball Championships. Josephine Avula has more. 
Height is not the main factor for Fiji's new netball coach when it comes to grooming young netball players. Physicality is really important, so whilst we don't have to have a whole team of very tall athletes, uh, certainly down in the circle defence and in the shooting department, yes, they do need to be uh, strong, tall and have some presence. The New Zealander believes the participation of different provincial teams will strengthen the talents. That's what makes, well, will make Fiji Netball strong when uh, players from all districts, all regions are represented. It, and so, uh, represented. so that's what we're looking at today. So where is the talent and how can we develop that talent from everywhere? After the tournament, Carpenter will select capable players to feature for the national senior and development side. We are selecting a tournament team, so that's 12 athletes. Uh, that will be four shooters, four centre court and four circle defenders. And also looking at uh, talent, so new talent um, development athletes um, who potentially could go on and represent uh, Fiji. The Digicel and Punja's National Netball Championships, which is held at the multi-purpose court in Lautoka, will end tomorrow. Josephine Navula, FBC Sports. More than 50 primary school students who decided to spend their school holidays brushing up on their sports skills have enrolled into the two-week sports camp organized by the Fiji Sports Council. The organizers believe the program will teach the children that through sports they can live a fit and healthy life. Um, uh, obligations to the community is to, as a sports facility provider, together with uh, the Sports uh, Commission and Think Pacific, we, like educating the young ones in sports, it will also help them in uh, eradicating NCDs. So when they grow up, they will know that to be actively involved in sports, that will eradicate NCDs and other related diseases. The kids participate in various sports with the help of volunteers and learn some life skills along the way. It would be nice if uh, other people would come and join in this. Uh, this is good to help other people in the sports, help them learn more skills, help them make new friends. The program continues until next week. Suva is on track to defend its title in the Rewa Galaxy Kachi Rugby Tournament. The Blues will meet Ovalau in the under-14 grade final later this evening. In the under-13 grade, Suva will take on Nandi, while Rakon Rove will meet Tailevu in the under-12 final. In the under-11 final, Suva meets Northland. Northland also takes on Nandi in the under-10 final, while Suva and Nandi clash in the under-9 final. That was your sports for this evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. Fiji Television Limited Group has announced a loss of $1.5 million for the year ended June 30th, 2014. The company recorded a $3.6 million profit for the previous financial year. The revenue for the group dropped by 6% to $37.2 million. The holding company announced a profit after tax of $1.3 million compared to $2.2 million the previous year. Given the profits decreased, the revenue for the holding company increased by 14% to $25.7 million. The, the main reason for this financial uh, status is mainly uh, one of expenses, uh, including uh, we during the 12 months, we switch off from one satellite to a new satellite just to facilitate the new channels. As a result of there is a considerable cost was incurred. Farid says these are temporary setbacks that they hope to settle within the next 12 months. It's weather time with Trish. Thanks, Jackie. Suva and Savu Savu were the only centers with a um, few showers, light showers today, just enough to make spots on the cars. But they wouldn't mind a little rain like in Nandi Lotoka Mba. And it was hot and sunny. Lambasa also had fair conditions all day. Temperatures Suva 28, Nandi 32, Ba 29, and Lambasa 32. The forecast for the last day for hibiscus tomorrow should see some cloudiness, but not much chance of rain in Suva if you want to go down to the grounds. Savu Savu should also have fair weather with cloudy skies throughout the day. Nandi Lotokamba and Lambasa can expect a sunny, dry day like today. For Mariners, southeast winds 15 to 20 knots in moderate to rough seas. 
our image of the day, this beautiful shot from the Hidden Paradise, Sabu Sabu, courtesy of Leon Whippy. Thanks so much for that, Trish. Recapping our top stories tonight, police launch criminal investigation into death of robbery suspect. Fiji and New Zealand foreign ministers hold bilateral meeting after seven years and 5,000 Fijians overseas now registered for September elections. Time for our Fijian Speak segment. They talk about uh, real issues, eh? about uh, many different uh, bring the country, uh, different culture. Yes, because they're talking about uh, race and culture. No, they're not creating fear. Put Fiji first. And news just to hand, Supervisor of Elections Mohamed Sinim has just announced to the media and members of political parties at the elections office that he is ready to proceed with the list of candidates that he has approved. He says the deadline for the review of the appeal lapsed at 4 p.m. today, and as far as he is concerned, his decision remains. However, Sinim added he is waiting for an announcement from the Electoral Commission. Now just a quick recap of our top stories one more time. Police launch criminal investigation into death of robbery suspect. Fiji and New Zealand foreign ministers hold bilateral meeting after seven years and 5,000 Fijians overseas now registered for September elections. Meanwhile, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizens eyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And to receive the latest headlines on your mobile phone, take subspace to FBC. Triple seven. Remember to join Amrita Pridashni from tomorrow with the weekend news. I'll be back again on Monday. Till then, you have yourselves a safe and enjoyable weekend. Bye for now. Sarwando <laughs> <laughs>